my mother-in-law is demanding I basically take care of my sister-in-law's kids, pay for their schooling, pay for their books, basically do everything that she should be doing. Well, you know what I do? I decide to go behind their back to her ex-husband and tell him everything. I'm 32 and my mother-in-law, Patricia, cornered me and begged me to pay my sister-in-law, Emily's children's school fees. But after years of practically raising them, I drew the line right there and refused because she got child support from her ex-husband, Daniel, anyways. But when she got all up in my personal business and tried to thwart my life as a threat, I made sure her life was ruined too. I'm posting this simply because I'm really overwhelmed by my situation and torn on whether my actions were right or wrong. I mean, I think I'm right, but my mother-in-law definitely does not agree, so here I am writing this post, mostly to vent, but also for clarity. But first things first, I'll spill the tea on her and provide you with all a bit of context for the situation. Emily's ex-husband, Daniel, made the decision to divorce. Ugh, messy divorce it was. Um, it was a couple of years back because of her constant reckless behavior, like her very obvious penchant for practically blowing money in the air. By spending it on useless, unnecessary stuff, I think his main problem was with her lack of sobriety. She was constantly boozing. There was always a beer mug filled to the brim with vodka on her hand. And also, of course, excessive partying with friends, strangers, and whoever would be up for it on random Tuesday evenings. She'd even go to, like, frat parties or something. Yeah, in her late 20s. She never held down a job and always got fired. Mind you, this woman has two degrees. She's not incompetent or dumb or anything, just reckless. And before you attack me for not getting her help, we tried. We tried rehab, we tried therapy, and involuntary holds at psychiatric centers. But she did not seem troubled, this nonchalant. Of course, I'm not denying she's going through something, but she's bratty to everyone and ruining her kids, Lily and Oliver's lives. I truly feel for them and her mom is simply enabling the behavior. The utter financial responsibilities and lack of prudence just spoiled their whole marriage completely. But Daniel, like the stupid guy he is, did not end it there. And then, I mean, they got married at 19 and made terrible decisions, but the worst decision they made was to have two children, honestly. At 21, yes, they decided to start trying. Somehow Daniel thought having kids would fix her and get her on the straight and narrow arrow, that having a child would magically fix the relationship, and, well, Emily would lose all her bad habits. Though it reduced initially with the huge responsibility of having twins to look after. She was back to her antics because Patricia would live with them and watch the kids for her. Also, a huge point of contention arose when Daniel said no after Emily pleaded with him to enlist the help of a nanny for the kids. So she could go out more often after their birth. Of course, Patricia had her own life and wasn't always around. So yeah, Emily did have to raise her kids just a little sometimes. Lily and Oliver actually spent a lot of their early childhood with me and my husband Lucas. Daniel wanted the kids to be raised by Emily and provide them with the utmost care by their mother. Emily accused him of restricting her freedom, manipulating his words and insinuating like the crazy woman that she is that he was deliberately, actively trying to destroy her life and not letting her enjoy it the way she wanted. She even accused him of baby trapping her. Consequently, they divorced and because the kids were young and quote needed their mother, she obtained custody of them. I assume she only wanted custody to spite Daniel and get plenty of child support, necessitating him to pay her child support after the legal proceedings. I feel for Daniel, man. Poor guy. Anyways, after the divorce, Lily and Oliver have mostly been at our place, and this entire year, they've only met their mother when Daniel's about to come around to visit. So she takes them to our place. That's all right by me, honestly. We're doing great financially, and we don't have kids of our own, so Lily and Oliver are always welcome at our place. We even take them on vacation sometimes. A month ago, there was a family gathering where I met Patricia and Emily, who was sober for once. Patricia looked me to the side and asked me to pay for the kids' school fees because they went to an expensive private school. Emily did not have a job, and child support was somehow not enough. 
This really confused me. All of Lily and Oliver's expenses were borne by me. They lived at my house, ate the food I bought, and wore the clothes I gave them. Literally all that Emily had to do was pay for their school tuition fee. Somehow she was even struggling with that. Something had to be wrong. So I refused, and for the very first time in years, I declined her request. She could deal with their fees herself, or so I thought, and I even tried telling them that they could ask Daniel for more money or do whatever. It was none of my business, and they were wrong for thinking that I'd take up the entire financial responsibility of the kids. It wasn't my job, so why should I? And it's not like I couldn't afford it. I simply didn't want to. Call me selfish for it, Patricia and Emily ganged up on me, threatening me and saying they'd ruin my life if I endangered the kids' education. I was endangering the education? Me? What the hell? Anyways, I told them that they could do whatever the heck they wanted and that I wasn't budging. So they did whatever the heck they wanted. Firstly, they kept Lily and Oliver at my place full time. Uh, This was not very convenient because I had a business trip right then and they knew that, but I could not say no because Emily would not answer my phone calls and locked both her house and Patricia's. Lucas had to take leaves from work because of this. When they realized that throwing the kids at us wouldn't work, they made a personal attack on me. They started spreading rumors on Facebook that I was having affairs with my coworkers and that Lucas and I were going through a very rough marriage. And that's why we didn't have kids after eight years of marriage and even longer dating. Truth is, I'm infertile. I can't have kids. No IVF or anything. My uterus is not a uterus, so yeah, that's it. I'm okay with that, and so is Lucas. We're both financially stable, have houses of our own, and have wealthy parents too. So we've discussed adoption and are hopefully having children in the next year. Of course, we haven't talked to anyone else about it yet and aren't planning on telling anyone until after we've adopted. The lowest blow was when Emily sent a deep fake, which is an obscene video where artificial intelligence swaps the faces of the people in the video with the faces of your choice. She did it with me and my coworker and sent it to my husband. She told him he needed to divorce me ASAP. She said I did not want kids because I was sleeping around and was planning on divorcing and ruining his life soon, and that he should leave me before I could do that to him. Of course, he did not believe a single word that she said and pointed out several glitches in the deep fake that proved it wasn't me. He also said I was way hotter than the woman in the video, so yeah, such husband material, I swear. She still insisted he leaves me because I would not have kids with him, but he simply said he was the one who didn't want any until later and shut her mouth up. Anyways, he came home and informed me of the situation, after which I patted him on the back for being a good husband. I was furious, completely, utterly furious. Thankfully, the kids weren't at mine anymore to witness the complete explosion of their aunt. I literally burst out. How dare she say that to my husband, the sheer audacity. Needless to say, I was looking for vengeance, so the very first thing I did was change the locks so she could not drop the kids off at my place anymore. The second thing I did was tell all of Patricia's friends what she did. I spread gossip and wildlife, and I did not even have to lie to ruin their reputations. I just had to speak the truth, and no one wanted to hang out with them after that. I'm evil, I know. The third thing that I did was personally go to Patricia's house and scream in their faces. I told them I would not take this disrespect and deserve to be treated like a saint for everything I did for Emily's kids. You know, I practically raised them, sent them to school, fed them, and made sure they had everything they needed. Literally, all I refused to do was pay their fees, and they started attacking me in this way. Going to my husband and asking him to divorce me was a whole other level of petty. I warned him that I was just as petty and vengeful as them, and I was about to obliterate them. Yes, I said that, and I ate them up. I slammed the door and got straight to work. I went to Patricia's book club and told them that she never reads books and would just read summaries and popular quotes. I knew for a fact that they took that stuff seriously and that Patricia absolutely adored the club and spent a lot of time there. They said that she wasn't welcome in the club anymore and that they'd inform her if she came. 
I then hit the guy she was seeing and told him about her activities. And he was absolutely shocked and said he didn't want to be with a woman of such less integrity. I swear old people are easy to offend and manipulate sometimes. Anyways, Patricia's life did not have much to ruin. I wasn't really that mad at her. Emily was the mastermind for all this and I was going to take her down. And I was going to absolutely ruin everything for her. She dared to come after my personal life and she really thought she could just destroy my marriage. What an idiot. I contacted Daniel and I was withholding all these years, holding my tongue because I thought Emily could change. But I didn't have any other option. Emily kept putting the kids through dangerous situations and refused to care for them, left them alone for long periods of time and used all her child support on alcohol and parties. I had a life too. I could not keep taking care of the kids all the dang time, could I? This time I was mad enough to let Daniel know the severity of the situation. I invited Daniel into our home and guess who else was there? The kids. Yeah, obviously. I'd let Emily drop them off this one time just to show Daniel how negligent and careless she was. Anyways, Daniel was shocked to see the kids at home as she had told him that they'd be at summer camp and had even taken money from him for the fees. Then it clicked. She's been taking extra money from him in the name of the child care, but she wasn't using a single penny on them, and that's why she had to beg me instead of asking Daniel. <laughs> I eased Daniel right unto it. I first asked him whether he knew Emily was unemployed and he said he didn't know shockingly. Hmm. He was already mad and I didn't even drop the bomb yet. Then I told him I was the one looking after them and caring for them most of the time and he asked the kids to verify what I said and they agreed that they were here for most of the week and otherwise they were with him. Further on, I told him Emily, uh, her habit of partying and her alcoholism was still there. Whenever I didn't have the kids, she dealt with them while completely drunk and would leave them alone sometimes. Daniel was absolutely fuming at this point, but I wasn't even at the worst part. He was ready to blast my door off and run to Emily to scream at her, but I told him to wait for the last bit. I let him know that all his child support was being used by Emily for personal reasons, that the kids' expenses were being paid by me, and that she didn't even have enough money to pay their school fees. I told him how her mother came begging for money for the kids' tuition fees and how they threatened me. I explained how they tried to thwart my life and ruin my marriage as well. I explained how I only told him because things were getting out of hand and I could not keep sacrificing my own work and delaying the adoption of my child for his children. He actually got angry at me. He was so mad that all these years we yearned to look after his kids and spend more time with them, but I chose to look after them instead. He wasn't happy that all times they were left alone at home. He could have taken care of them instead had I told him earlier, and you know what? He's right. I should have let him know when the kids saw me more than their own mother. I let him vent and be mad at me and apologize for not telling him sooner. And I even discussed his options as someone working in the legal field and let him know that the court would be on his side this time if he ever decides that he wants to do something about it. He understood what I meant and said that he'll see what to do next. And he was about to leave my house with the kids to go to Emily's, but... I stopped him from taking them because I knew things were about to get messy. I remember the divorce. Huh, anyways, she probably wasn't at home in the first place, and I told him how she went to the club every night for a couple of hours on Fridays so she could take a guy home with her. That's why the kids were with me that night, and he thanked me for the tip and left. Well... I haven't heard from Daniel ever since, but Emily's been blowing up my phone with threats and slurs and other explicits. So be it. I'm not scared. I did what was right for the children and what's right for Daniel. I did what was right for me and my husband. I think I did most right for Emily, even though she doesn't know it yet. She needs to fix her state. It's been too long and Patricia needs to cut her off. She needs to stop straight up enabling her behavior, and Lily and Oliver are with me for now, but hopefully Emily or Daniel take them away quickly, and we can all move past this. 
I'm debating my morality on this one. Lucas thinks I did absolutely right, but Patricia just said, I did Emily wrong and took away the only two people she loved from her life. She said that maybe, just maybe, Lily and Oliver could have helped her get her life back on track, but I took that away from her, ruining her life and exiling her to external doom, <laughs> or whatever. I don't care, I'm happy. I have other things to do than worry about Emily, especially after she's attacked me and tried to get Lucas to divorce me. She went too far, and I don't give a crap about her anymore. She could take drugs, and I would not stop her. It's her life that she's been ruining, and I'm just protecting my kids. Please let me know in the comments whether it was okay for me to bring Daniel into this or whether I overstepped my boundaries. Thank you for reading. Have a great day, y'all. Update number one. Hey, how are you? I'm back with another update. Before that, I'd like to address some of the comments saying it wasn't my place to inform Daniel of Emily's behavior. Lily and Oliver are my nieces and nephews, and I have a sense of responsibility towards them. I think I owe it to the children to inform their father and, you know, of the child endangerment and the sheer lack of regard that Emily had for them. The negligence was concerning, and I had to do something about it, right? Emily came at me the other day. It was a weekend, and I was alone at home. Because Lucas had gone out with his homeboys, and she came over to my place, and when I saw her, I almost shut the door again, but she blocked it with her foot. She stormed in and berated me for about five minutes, after which I got fed up and told her she could go cry about it or do whatever the heck she wanted, but to leave me alone. I warned her I'd issue a restraining order against her and told her this was just proof of how crazy, out of her senses, and wacky that she was. At this, she raised her hand at me and extended it to slap me, but I stopped her and just shook my head disappointedly. I'll let her know that she was undeserving of custody and that she'd ruin the kid's life if she had them any longer. After that, she left and tears streamed down her face. The children deserve better. I mean, I'm no saint. I didn't snitch just for the kids. I do admit that I did have a sort of an ulterior motive getting the kids away from her so that she could not guilt me, saying I was being cruel and selfish towards them. Also, wow, vengeance. She can't try and take only person I love away from me and not expect me to do the same. She's a mother, but she did not act like it when she had the chance, and now whose fault is that, huh? Anyways, so Daniel's taking legal action against Emily. He's just getting started with a custody battle, and I've gotten him the best legal team I could find. Not that he needed it, he already has a pretty strong case with evidence of misuse of child support, and of course child negligence, and I think the court would sympathize with him. Lucas and I are with him every step of the way, and I really hope this settles quickly so that Lily and Oliver are safe with their father. Also, so that Emily pulls herself together and gets her act straight, or not, I guess. I don't really care. The only reason I was concerned was because she had kids to look after. Now she can booze her life away, party with whoever, do whatever drugs. Stay away from the kids, though, for all I care. For her own sake, though, I hope she fixes herself. Things are starting to look up now that Daniel's trying to get custody, and I'm hopeful for him, at least. All right, that's it for the update. I'll let you all know what happens next time. I'll see you later, guys. Update number two. Hey, good morning. I'm here to update you all on the stuff that went down, you know, a couple weeks ago. So, first, I have some very great news. The court ruled in Daniel's favor, and he now has custody of Lily and Oliver. Emily has visitation, but she doesn't get maintenance anymore, and it was a long ordeal. And it was extremely grueling for all of us, especially the kids. Emily dropped the kids off for the first court hearing, and the kids were with us through the entire process. She never came to pick them up and did not respond to our text asking if she wanted to pick them up either. In case you're wondering why I'm not concerned about Emily, she's done this before, like, a million times. And she showed up to all the court hearings looking fine and dandy. I don't even think she wants the children. She just wants child support to live off of. So yeah, the kids were picked up from our place by Daniel in the end. And 
We were there for them the whole time. I did actually end up paying their school fees while they were at my house. So all of this was technically for nothing. Though the kids are now going to be safer, well cared for, and well, you know, with their father. I didn't want to ask Daniel for money because they weren't his responsibility until they were with him. Also, I have this weird thing when it comes to asking for money and I get awkward. But like, yeah, I guess it's no big deal. I don't mind paying for my own two kids. They've spent most of this year with me and half of last year too, and they're my husband's sister kids, so I think it's okay to call them mine. Anyways, it's been a couple of months since Daniel had the children, and it's not been bumpless. So basically, there was this one incident a month-ish ago when Emily pulled the kids out of school and the receptionist was informed of the situation and everything beforehand. But they still did not think to inform Daniel before letting the kids go off with Emily. So yeah, she took the kids from school for the day without telling any of us. And when Daniel went to pick the kids up after school, they weren't there, obviously. So he went to the front desk to ask where the kids were and he was informed that their mother had picked them up. He told her the front desk, you know, said, what are you guys thinking? For almost half an hour, he was arguing with them. Because why would they send the children with her even though he explicitly mentioned that she did not have custody rights and they were not to be taken by her unless she had a uh, prior permission from him or that he'd informed them? But these people did not inform it at all that their mother picked them up. Anyways, after that, he went to her place to check whether she'd be there, but she wasn't. He tried calling her several times, but she would not answer, and eventually she turned off her phone. That's when Daniel thought it was time to call me. He explained the whole situation to me, and he did not seem very panicked, probably because he thought that they were with Emily. So they were in safe hands and that nothing bad would happen to them as long as their mother was there with them. He only seemed hung by the fact that she did not inform him before picking them up and that she should have at least answered his calls to confirm that the kids were safe and actually with her. Her switching off the phone multiple times, letting it go to voicemail, meant that she was intentionally ignoring the call, which meant she probably had the kids and this was some weird form of trying to torture him. I found this extremely stupid because I actually knew what levels Emily could stoop to, but so I legitimately worried for the kids' safety. I told Daniel that he had to find the kids immediately and that Lucas and I would come to help him Lucas was at work, but when I called him to explain the situation, he immediately took leave to come to help us find them, and Lucas called his mother to ask whether she knew anything about it or not, because she's usually right with Emily or enabling her weird behavior, but to our surprise, she sounded extremely concerned and worried, too. She told us she didn't know anything and told us to inform her immediately when we found them. So we drove around to the nearest vicinity of the school because Emily did not have a car, so we assumed she must be in the radius. We looked around for a bit and Lucas kept trying her phone, hoping she'd pick it up eventually. Then I had a eureka moment. So you know how people have no sense of privacy and security and post literally everything on the interwebs for people to see? I just happened to open Snapchat where she added me a couple years ago and constantly sent snaps for this weird thing called streaks or something that she asked me to do with her. And I remembered how she had shown me the snap map and how she always kept it on. I used to keep tabs on her back when she was in her drunk college student era. I could not pinpoint her exact location, but she was at the mall 30 minutes ago. So we went there and looked around until Lucas found them in a Starbucks. I think. Anyways, he called us up, and the minute the kids saw us, they came running towards me and leaped up in my arms. Yes, two heavy seven-year-olds. I almost got knocked over, by the way. They wouldn't say anything and seemed unharmed, and Emily just said she missed her kids and had the full right to see them and take them wherever she wanted, wherever she needed. Girl, isn't that the exact opposite of what visitation means? Anyways, once we got to Daniel's house, we all sat down for a meal. Obviously, Emily wasn't there. And then I asked Lily and Oliver where they went and what they did. Lily told me that they were at Emily's house for a while, and then she took them to the mall afterward. And I figured that this was around the time that Daniel had started calling her. 
which meant he knew she had them with her. Then I asked them what they were doing at home, and Lily was hesitant to answer. But Oliver spoke, addressing his father, and apparently Emily asked them to tell Daniel to give her money because she was jobless, and it was really unfair that they were having all the fun and she was going hungry. That manipulative jerk. Imagine trying to guilt literal children. He said that his mommy wasn't eating anything anymore and didn't have enough money for rent. So she was going to be homeless. Daniel just said okay to the kids and told them not to worry about a thing. I'm pretty sure Emily and Daniel had a fight that night because Emily's been really quiet since this incident. The kids see her every other weekend at his house, so yeah, that happened. Okay, that's all. I'll update you if anything else happens. Have a good day, guys. Update number three. Hey, I'm back with the final update, so... Basically, after the whole incident with her kidnapping the children, Patricia decided that the whole thing with Emily and her recklessness was getting completely out of hand. She's almost 30, and she needs to get her act straight, apparently. Well, I've been subtly hinting at that to Patricia for years, but this incident made her realize. Anyway, she's been the one paying all her bills and dealing with all her addictions, keeping a roof over her head, etc., Basically, she's been mommying her all these years, not pushing her to the streets when she's overstaying her welcome and been a child for way too long. But she finally, and I mean finally, cut her off. Well, Patricia cut her off both financially and as a parent, and she refuses to talk to her until she has a job, pays her rent, and, well, stops partying and drinking so much. We didn't know because Patricia was trying to keep it under control, but Emily was dabbling in substance abuse. Hard drugs. Yikes. Thank God nothing bad happened to her. However careless and reckless she is in such a big city, there are some bad people out there, so I'm grateful she isn't dead in a ditch or being taken advantage of. However much I despise her, I still would never wish that on anybody, and I really hope she gets the help that she needs. Or not, I guess I don't really care. She's working as a waitress at Luke's restaurant right now, so he's keeping a close eye on her for the sake of the restaurant. She's keeping her head down mostly, being nice and providing unsurprisingly good services, but she shows up late every single day. She got my table the other day, and she smelt of whiskey but she mostly kept it together apart from one catty remark. Hey, she's really going through it, and uh, as she deserves. But I'll allow it this time, I guess, since I, I really don't care. In other news, our adoption application just got approved. I have a daughter! She's four. She's so gorgeous and adorable, and her name's Freya. We're so happy and excited to finally have a child of her own. Not that we don't love Lily and Oliver just as much. <laughs> it's adorable watching Lily and Freya play tea party in the little frocks and Oliver grumpily sitting by the side making rude comments but secretly enjoying and wanting to join in. Freya's getting a lot of uh, Lily's old stuff and it makes just me so supportive and nostalgic to see all the little frocks I brought Lily on Freya. I'm literally so happy and I'm finally a mother. Well, I've got the parenting practice in plenty, so it isn't really overwhelming or shocking. I think Lucas is a great dad. Really is. I've never seen him love something so much as our daughter, and I'm really happy. Lily and Oliver are safe and happy, and Lucas is keeping an eye on Emily, and Emily is learning her lesson. So yeah, everything turned out great. Though I'd rather it hadn't happened in the first place. Anyways, it is what it is, I guess. Okay, that's it. Have a great day, guys. So we know sister-in-law's husband had all the proof and he filed for the custody, but I want to know what you guys think because this part I'm about to say was a very hot topic in the comment section. It turns out that the sister-in-law's significant other, well, her ex, was not very happy with OP because OP basically never told him what was going on for a long time. Some of the commenters were saying, you know what, I wouldn't have got involved either. But some commenters were like, no, there were kids involved. The husband or ex-husband should have known exactly what was happening. 
I want to know which route you guys would have taken. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you stay out of it or do you get involved? Let me know your thoughts. And if you guys are new to today's uh, channel or video, I should say, and you want more daily stories, all you have to do is subscribe. So hit that big subscribe button underneath this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And just remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.